Alrighty, hello everybody folks and good morning. Welcome to a quick little discussion here on my favorite dad devices and specifically some of the stuff that I typically don't see uh, getting covered in handheld uh, reviews. Because oftentimes the discussion will be stuff like, oh, the, you know, the strength of the hardware involved or uh, the kinds of uh, systems that they're running or what kind of modifications you can do to them or whatever else. And I personally judge my devices based on not only the stuff that they can do vanilla, I do typically mod my devices, as you can tell by GTA uh, <laughs> San Andreas running on the Vita here, but I prefer to judge them based off of what they can do by themselves, and additionally how the device actually, well, fits in a dad role. So, you know, being a dad of three, we got a toddler running around, there's going to be those situations when you need to throw a device in your pocket very quickly, and you need to confidently know that that thing's going in your pocket and not falling out, because when it comes to, you know, preventing your toddler from eating that random crap they just picked up off the ground and breaking your device, you're going to break your device first. It is a natural instinct. You cannot help it. So let's go ahead and get into it here. So specifically, the devices we'll be talking about here today are going to be the uh, the PS Vita, which I personally think this is the best, like, overall profile for a handheld ever made. Um, we've got the Switch Lite, which I personally was against for quite a decently long time, but I got to say this happy little guy actually changed my mind. Um, the uh, PSP, now normally I would say, I would recommend a 3000 model for this, um, but uh, this is one that I was working on for a friend, uh, so we've got a 1000 over here, and then additionally we've got a, uh, we've got my wife's 3DS, and this black case over here is a size comparison with a Steam Deck, <laughs> um, because I can't actually use the Steam Deck while recording off it at the same time. Literally the size of this thing encompasses all of these other devices combined. So. What I wanted to talk about here is, again, some of those things that typically don't get discussed as much. So, so let's go ahead and start with the uh, with the Vita. Uh, so one of the things that I was trying to explain in my last review that I didn't quite get across as well as I'd like, and that's actually why we're doing this different camera setup here today, is going to be this right here. So when it comes to the Vita, uh, one of the reasons that it's so dang good at what it does, like being able to be confidently thrown in a pocket comfortably. And this is actually something I see uh, criticized on these devices a little bit, was uh, folks will say that the analog sticks stick out too much. Now, they actually stick out less than any other device out there, and additionally, they actually have a bunch of features that we'll talk about here that, again, I never see brought up. So if you get like a, a thin case of any kind, I personally really like these uh, see-through silicone ones, but you do you, uh, but you'll notice that the uh, the actual kind of clearance uh, for that analog stick is barely above the buttons. Okay, awesome, my, my uh, phone timed out, that's how you know this is a professional production, but one of the things that I don't see co get covered that much is this right here. I don't know why this didn't become a standard feature on handhelds, because it is it is just perfection in my eyes. The actual sticks themselves, especially on the 2000s, do eventually get drift, that's their own problem, but this, specifically. Uh, the Vita is one of the few handhelds I've seen that actually bothered to put plastic rims around their analog sticks, which makes it far, far less likely to actually snag on anything. Uh, anyway, so you can very comfortably know that it's coming in, and when you're going and, uh, and you know, playing this thing, obviously, when it comes to actually replacing these things, it's, uh, it's surprisingly easy. Like, if anything actually does happen to your sticks and whatnot, um, uh, you'll actually notice that, uh, that this is probably one of the easiest devices out there to repair. In fact, almost surprisingly so. Also, I have no idea why apparently his uh, his gang keeps getting stronger and weaker randomly. It's really hard to uh, kind of uh, watch this through three different lenses of cameras <laughs> and try to figure it out. It, we'll just put it back on pause. Anyway, so very comfortable with sticks uh, for the most part. Not the best out there in terms of, uh, you know, for a lot of uh, shooters and things, but for most games this will do just fine as long as you got a gentle touch with it. Um, and I think that's also part of it. I think part of the reason that these uh, get uh, looked down upon as much as they do is the fact that folks want to just, like, go death grip on their devices, you know, go all super hardcore gamer mode with it. It's like, dude, we're talking about a dad device here. We're talking about a case where you, you're probably pretty used to taking a gentle touch by this point. Um, so yeah, these uh, these ones uh, they get uh, they get worn out pretty quick uh, if you're you know being real stressful with it. Um, but I know personally this one has seen a good bit of content use, um, and it has seen no drift whatsoever. Now, part of the reason that uh, oof, that was a sweet noise. Uh, part of the reason that these uh, sticks are actually so easy to replace. Let's go ahead and show off this one. So this is one of the Vitas I was working on a little while ago. Um, this is the one that had a entire dresser dropped on it and was actually still functioning. I kept this uh, screen as a bit of, of a souvenir. 
But when we look at the back of the device, uh, they actually have everything split off into different pieces. So basically you've got uh, the board and screen stuff. Uh, the screen is just part of the case itself, making it really defensively well built. Um, and additionally, we'll have boards over here and boards over here. Um, so this basically means that uh, when it comes to the sticks themselves, not only are they very easy to place, replace, but if anything were to get catastrophically damaged on the device, um, you basically can make sure that it's just just going to be the most obvious parts. So you'll notice on the design of this thing, uh, for the most part, the sticks are just about the only thing that sticks out, and if this thing were to fall on its face, these sticks would be the thing that would take the hit. I've regularly seen when going and repairing Vitas that the sticks, like if somebody drops at one hell of a long distance, the sticks would get uh, potentially damaged, they might get some drift, in some cases they would break entirely, um, but they would be the things that take the hit and all of the boards end up surviving. These sticks are like 10 bucks to replace. Uh, the screen itself, surprisingly, this entire front assembly is like 20 bucks. It's very <laughs> easy to replace, it's just the boards inside that are the more expensive part. Um, and again, these are super easy to take apart. If you can do a couple of uh, ribbon cables and a couple of screws, you're good to go. No special tools needed, just like a, a pair of tweezers and a tiny screwdriver, and you're basically set to go repair one of these things. It's absolutely remarkable how easy they are to fix. Um, and again, this is on top of the fact that they are already fairly sturdy devices. I was able to keep this thing in my work vest basically 24-7. It was getting knocked around. This case would end up uh, taking the occasional knock and whatnot. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it would get uh, it would get hit, it would get dinged, it would just survive wear and tear. I've seen no drift from this thing whatsoever. Oftentimes what, uh, what will happen when folks are complaining about drift from these devices is the fact that they will keep them in a, like, jeans pocket or something like that. When there's a pocketable device, think about the stresses involved when, actu when you're actually putting something in a pocket, right? That it's going to be essentially putting wear on absolutely everything that's in there. So if you shove it in there and it's constantly compressing all of those parts, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Honestly, if you're carrying around devices, you may laugh at, uh, at any dads that wear a dad vest. Get yourself a damn dad vest. These things are fantastic. You can never have too many pockets. Um, but yeah, no, this thing stays in my vest basically all the time. No issues whatsoever. But for the longest time, I was thinking that this is basically as big as it got for a comfortable uh, kind of pocket carry device in that particular way. Um, it does its job, you know, particularly well. This thing never heats up, and that's one of those things I liked about it. It can run a lot of emulators. It can run a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, like PS2 uh, era games uh, natively, some PS3 stuff in there as well. Um, and so, uh, uh, so like for example, you know, I love FF10. I love uh, MGS2, and so this thing can just run those by themselves. I love all the Armored Core games, and typically whenever I've recorded stuff for the channel, it's been off of a PS Vita. Um, and then the battery life is phenomenal. Like, this thing legitimately only needs to charge every three to four days. Um, I, it's not like I'm sitting there playing for eight hours straight or anything, uh, but as far as uh, a device to uh, kind of, uh, like, let's say, pick up between things that I'm doing at work, uh, or, uh, uh, or those situations when I'm kind of in between tasks during the day and just want to sit and relax for a minute, that's what this is here for, and it does that job remarkably well. Now, the thing, the thing is, uh, for the longest time I was thinking, again, that this was about as big as it got, and that also, uh, a lot of times I ended up going back to a PSP, uh, just because I kept thinking, like, well, this is, you know, kind of the, uh, this is the kind of thing that's, uh, that's similarly kind of built as far as the Vita goes. Um, these 1000s were kind of chunky, but uh, either way, very sturdily built, very uh, easy to repair and whatnot. Um, if you've ever heard anyone say otherwise, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> Like, it, it barely gets easier to repair uh, than, than a PSP or Vita. Um, <clears throat> but, like, the uh, the fact that they always uh, stuck with these really slim analog sticks, uh, obviously it depends on uh, it depends on preference, but uh, I always really like these sticks. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite stick designs ever. Um, just the fact that it's uh, very kind of uh, comfortable to, uh, to hold in your hand here like this, especially for the armored core controls. I always respected the fact that they moved the, uh, the offhand options from circle down to here so that you're moving around and then you can just like, you move around, then you tap it over here. It, it, it's just brilliant. Um, anyway, so I was really, really, really appreciated the PSP as far as its design goes. Um, but yeah, uh, th they've gotten a lot of additional mods. Their battery life isn't as good as the Vita, though. 
Like, I'd say you can comfortably get about uh, four or five hours. It's basically similar to the light in that particular way. Um, but again, with a Vita, we're talking about, like, <laughs> ten, sometimes higher than that, depending on how you uh, handle these things. Um, and the, what, the thing I wanted to point out is that uh, one of the comparisons I see is oftentimes like this, that they're saying, like, okay, comparing with the PSP, the Vita is so much bigger, but... Realistically, it actually surprisingly is more pocketable, as strange as this sounds. Again, remember, very slim profile here, so when it fills out in your pocket, ultimately I think the Vita actually ends up fitting more comfortably in most pockets. Um, and additionally, I should probably mention, I have not used this thing with a case outside of this uh, slimline cover here. Um, kind of defeats the purpose of being a dead device if you have to take anything off of it. Um, it's one of the reasons I don't like the normal Switch. So, like... As far as being able to uh, to punch above its uh, weight class and things like that, a lot of its ports, admittedly, are certainly on the janky side. Like, <laughs> I've oftentimes brought up uh, the uh, the port of uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown. First game I bought for the Vita, um, was immediately very confused at how shitty it ran, <laughs> but, like, this is legitimately one, like, probably one of my most played handheld things uh, for this uh, this particular game alone. Like, yeah, it's glitchy, it runs slow, but it's still XCOM EU on the go, you know? So, uh, I just wanted to say that, yeah, as far as the fact that it can run a lot of stuff that you can see on phones and whatnot without actually heating up, that's part of the reason that its battery life lasts so dang well. Um, a lot of these uh, other devices, like in the, ca in the case of something like the, uh, the PSP, obviously its batteries are beyond a decade old at this point, so they're going to be a little bit on the uh, uh, kind of uh, rotting away side, but um, in terms of the Vita... It's, it's literally just the fact that it doesn't heat up that causes it to be so dang consistent. Uh, some games will drain more, uh, like stuff like uh, Borderlands 2 will uh, will definitely cause it uh, to go down to like six or seven hours. But most things that you, uh, that you play on these things don't have that problem. Like I probably have gotten 15 plus hours of battery life by playing Tactics Over One Vision. Um, <clears throat> so for most situations, this has generally always been my standby because this, like, exact uh, kind of mix between, like, exemplary battery performance, fairly, uh, basically, I, not quite minimalist, but it's got a lot of features crammed into what doesn't seem like much. Like the fact that uh, the touchscreen actually has remappable controls on both sides of the device. So, like, this thing is also uh, controls here. So, like, whenever you go into, let's say, uh, your, uh, your old games and things, uh, you can basically pull up a menu that allows you to uh, to remap all of your different controls. It's currently booting up, so it doesn't have it yet. Oh, whoops. Um, I think I have to restart it. Um, anyway, the point is you can remap controls. So, like... Eh, that's annoying. I gotta restart it. Yeah, the, whenever you end up modding these things, sometimes it ends up messing with your originally bought stuff. So we'll just go ahead and restart that thing real quick. Um, <clears throat> kind of one of the downsides of, uh, of modding it for the purpose of recording off of it. Um, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and continue on here. So the reason that this was important was because remappable controls are basically remappable for everything. Anything can be anything else. If you wanted four additional buttons on the front, four additional buttons on the back, you can do that. That doesn't seem particularly important, but it is very handy in specific situations. So, like, for example, in order to cover extra bills, I'll occasionally go uh, go do plasma donation and things like that, as many folks do. Um, for those that are outside of the States, sometimes here, we pay our bills with blood. Anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more than that, but... <laughs> but, uh, anyways, um, so to that end, you want to be able to play, you know, your device with one hand or something. And so, for example, I'll go and remap the D-pad over to the right analog stick. I'll, you know, keep these as is, but I'll go and remap uh, the R2, L2s and stuff like that to other uh, other sides of the device. Um, on top of the fact uh, that I should probably mention the PS1 and PSP games are basically running officially on the device, so it, you don't have emulation jank or anything along those lines. Um, and additionally, the actual format for PS1 games typically makes them run a lot better. Well, just, just it's a lot more convenient on this device. If you've ever run an emulator of any kind and you ran into those cases where your PS1, one of those cases that one of your PS1 games needed a specific format or something along those lines uh, in order to have audio, <laughs> you don't have that here. It's just one format. It's very easy to convert anything into, and it runs really darn well. Okay, so that being said, 
Let's go ahead and cover its main competitor at the time here real quick, the 3DS. I'm just going to briefly cover this one. Very unique library. Um, kind of, uh, as far as its controls go, it's a little... Uh, these sticks aren't everyone's jam. I personally, again, really like sliders, but to each their own. Uh, like, for the longest time, it, it's always kind of bugged me to press down on any thumbstick, so I'm all okay with this. Um, but these are very sturdily built uh, little devices. They're emulator, kind of inbuilt emulation options, especially once uh, once hacked, are pretty darn cozy. Um, you know, being able to play a lot of uh, GBA games, GBC games, whatever else, basically officially on the device. Um, pretty much the best way to play those, in my opinion. Um, especially things like I was kind of surprised to see that stuff like uh, like Pokemon Crystal Clear and whatever else uh, worked fine on uh, my 3DS before it got destroyed. Um, I will say that uh, regardless of how sturdily built a device is, um, if uh, you happen to lend one to one of your kiddos and they happen to hand it to the toddler who thinks it's hilarious to smash it over her uh, uh, car's uh, her car seat's uh, cup holder, I mean, those ribbons suck to replace. <laughs> but um, let's just say they get energetic. Anyway, so, with that being said, um, that hinge, that hinge is kind of the main uh, the main issue here. The devices are fantastic in an ideal scenario. They're very, very pocketable. This profile is very uh, comfortable to keep around. Um, they're good at taking knocks, but uh, that hinge, if anything, whacks it while you're playing it, it basically it's just toast. So that's part of the issue. Uh, replacing the screens on these things is notoriously difficult. I know personally when I was replacing the, uh, the, the faulty screen on mine, um, I ended up having to uh, essentially tear out the, uh, the camera. Um, just because you have to do this whole weird spirally nonsense uh, with three different cables going into a tiny hole at once. And then if at any point your hand twitches, congratulations, you're buying a whole new screen. I, that didn't happen to me three times in a row. I don't know what you're talking about. Moving on. Um, so let's talk about the Switch Lite and the Steam Deck at this point. So Steam Deck is pretty obvious. Uh, if you, for example, happen to need a computer, but you're not using it all the time, you don't necessarily need something to be ultra pocketable, um, but uh, you specifically want to be able to have the functions of a laptop, but also you want to have a big ass uh, switch, basically. Um, like, it, you can't go wrong with the Steam Deck. Uh, the thing has been my PC for over a year at this point. I absolutely love it. Um, it's very good at that particular job. Um, the one thing that it doesn't handle particularly well is if you have like 20 tabs of anything open at once. So, just like, you know, keep it, don't do the thing, don't do the boomer thing, basically, <laughs> and you're all good. Um, Size-wise, they're not exactly small, but I will say, with a large, um, uh, with a large vest, I actually was able to, uh, to get uh, this, kind of, well, my wife got me this, uh, this case for being able to fit it in my vest, um, and it was, uh, it was possible to carry the thing around, not necessarily super comfortably, it wasn't exactly very nimble, and I didn't bring it to, like, you know, watch the kids, uh, uh while they're playing or something, but, uh, it was enough to, um, it was enough to at least, uh, be able to go, like, let's say, go bring it to a donating plasma appointment or something like that, or go bring it to the hospital to, uh, to visit relatives or some such, um, that, uh, it is comfortable enough to walk with, it's just not gonna be a, you know, put it in your pocket and forget it kind of situation, which finally gets me to the Switch Lite, because this has been a very pleasant surprise of a device. Uh, so, uh, actually one thing I, I should probably mention battery life-wise, I mentioned all the other devices. 3DS is also probably in like the three to four hour ba uh, ballpark. Steam Deck gets a weird reputation, okay? So <laughs> in, in the case of the Steam Deck, right, its reputation is like, oh, you'll get a couple of hours of battery life or whatever else. I would say that's on the minimum end. It depends entirely on how you use them. So you have complete settings over what exactly you want to uh, to do at any given time with the thing. You have limiters for anything from uh, from whatever the hell its cycles do to frame rates to whatever else. And if you take the time to actually uh, tinker with those for a few seconds, you'll usually find that you can get upwards of 10 hours of battery life on the thing. Um, like I comfortably was able to not charge it for a couple of days while playing Tactics Ogre Reborn. Um, <clears throat> But, uh, but yeah, it is definitely going to be one of those things that's on your mind as, like, it probably will not be ready to go after your car trip, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty darn decent. Just like the Switch, though, uh, it has that thing where its battery life is fine until you feel the warm coming, and then the battery life is gone. Um, just because it's really just the overheating that ends up draining the hell out of the battery. Um... 
but I was comfortably able to, for example, uh, bring it with me to uh, uh, to go do uh, food deliveries for a day. I um, was able just to kind of like keep it around, and it still was able to hold up the entire day. I was, you know, testing out some games for reviews and things. Um, because oftentimes uh, anyone that's ever done deliveries before will tell you there's just those times that you just find yourself sitting there for like an hour and a half uh, waiting for somebody's Taco Bell order to get done because they just don't know what the hell went wrong with their system that day. And so you're just sitting around doing nothing for a while, and thankfully you happen to be on hourlies that day. <laughs> so anyways, so those kinds of, kinds of situations, it's really great for... Um, like it, it's probably uh, it's probably my favorite overall device, um, as far as just how much it can do. Um, in fact, I probably wouldn't even have this guy here whatsoever if it wasn't for Unicorn Overlord recently. Uh, which gets me to the Switch Lite. So the Switch Lite is an interesting little thing here because I was criticizing the Switch for the longest time over uh, over uh, its heat issues, battery issues, size weirdness, the uh, the controls being all wiggly. Um, like, this is uh, one of the extra sets of controls here that I was taking apart uh, due to yet another weird wiggle issue on them. Uh, the uh, the default ones, uh, uh, the default ones have this... <sighs> this is not a D-pad, man! <laughs> this, this is, this is not a D-pad. I'm sorry, no. that This is not how D-pads should be. Um, so, proper D-pad on the thing, obviously. Still not a huge fan of the offset sticks, but either way... For my purposes, I was really surprised uh, by how well this thing actually held up to kind of the scrutiny I was putting these other devices through. So profile-wise, uh, if we look at it from the side, we see that with a silicone case, it's actually not too far off from the Vita in terms of its uh, uh, overall profile there. Um, in terms of its overall library, I mean, that's one of the few things that's unequivocally one of the best things out there as far as the Switch goes. Um, its library is kind of ridiculous for what it can do. Um, and in fact, um, as far as its uh, library is concerned, I gotta say that, uh, uh, that, uh, that yeah, the, probably uh, playing things on this little thing is probably some of my favorite ways to play some of this stuff. Like, uh, something like Monster Sanctuary I generally prefer on the deck, but, you know, we're, uh, works exceptionally well here. Fell Seal, despite the fact that I love uh, I, I love the customization options on PC, I think I've probably played it more on the Switch than anything else. Uh, Crypt of the Necron Dancer I have on uh, on several things. Uh, Battle Brothers is incredibly hard to read on this thing, but it does play. Uh, same thing with uh, something like Bomber Crew. Uh, Risk of Rain 2, also similarly kind of hard to see on this device, but it's just enough to make it work. Um, but uh, but as far as uh, as far as this thing goes. Like its library is kind of insane as far as uh, as like as far as what you can play on a handheld. Now, in this case, I want to point out a couple of things that are a little bit of an unsung thing, especially in the purposes of being a dad device here. So, a lot of the games that you can get on this, a lot of the ports, um, may seem like oh, it's just the Switch port. But one thing that I also never see getting discussed for some reason is the size difference. Like XCOM 2, for example, right? One of my absolute favorites. It's a, it's going to be a situation where if you want to play it on your phone, it's all well and good, but you're going to have misclicks every now and then. Your finger will twitch, and somebody will die. Um, in, the, in the, uh, in this version, you have, you know, the, uh, the comfortability of button controls, so you don't have those button twitches. Um, but at the same time, the size, right? Because yeah, I can play XCOM 2 on the Steam Deck. On the Steam Deck, the install size is, uh, is pushing 70 gigabytes. Here, it's like, friggin' what? Okay, so it's a little hard to read on here, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, so the game plus all its DLC plus everything else is 20 gigs as opposed to the almost 70 on the uh, on the Steam Deck there. Um, Triangle still exists. Um, let's see. Uh, interestingly enough, yeah, Planescape Torment and Icewind Dale got ported to the Switch for some reason. Uh, unbelievably hard to read, but it's still cool that it's on there. But anyways, point being, the uh, the actual size uh, sizes of these ports, while not as low as the phone versions are still very impressive uh, in terms of just not taking too much space. And additionally, um, as far as its remapping options, this is actually one of the negative points that I had on this one that's really absolutely bizarre. So if, uh, if for example, you wanted to do what I was talking about earlier, about uh, being able to, uh, to play the game, uh, like, let's say, one-handed at the hospital or something like that, um, interestingly enough, um, if you were to go over to the controls, you can remap some things, and if you try to reach out to... Uh, 
uh, if you try to reach out to their uh, customer service, uh, they actually will um, will tell you that you can remap absolutely every single button. This is not true because you can't remap the D-pad over to uh, uh, to an analog stick. This is typically something that doesn't matter that much because on almost every port uh, for the Switch, the analog stick happens to be the D-pad also. Um, you know, whether it's your Legend of Manas, whether it's your Fell Seals, something like that. For some reason, one of the ones that I play most on this thing, Tactics Ogre, decided, nah, we gotta stick with the PSP controls, so this controls the camera, this controls the uh, the movement. Um, and you can't move this to here. Funnily enough, you can even change the, uh, the camera button that allows you to record the screen <laughs> over to the thumbstick if you wanted to, but not the D-pad. For some reason, the D-pad is just off limits. Um, like you can uh, you can change some things. Like you could change this over to here. So theoretically, you could change like this to A, and then the trigger to B, and, <laughs> and then use that as the D-pad or something. Just uh, some kind of scuffed setup like that. Uh, but I just found it really weird that that limitation is there. And again, I know that for most folks, this isn't uh, this isn't too much of an issue. But uh, for again, for those of us stateside that kind of have to put up with that kind of stuff to be able to pay the bills. Um, it's going to be a situation where there's just going to be a couple hours during the week where you can't use one of your hands for a while and you get paid for it. So, essentially, uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at there. Now, uh, overall tactile type stuff on this device that I just really appreciate is just the fact that the buttons feel very uh, Game Boy-esque, really. Like, this thing just feels like the modern Game Boy here. And actually, if I... Originally, I would gotten this thing to, like, get it and maybe uh, fix it up and sell it or something like that, but, like, the fact that it's the same color as my, uh, my previously, uh, well, now, uh, now gone 3DS and stuff like that, I don't know, it's just, there's something heartwarming about this little device. Not to mention I got it for absolutely dirt cheap. Uh, that's actually the next thing that I want to mention here. Um, as far as prices are concerned, um, that, uh, currently, uh, like, this guy was 50 bucks. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> that, that this thing was a uh, was a pawn shop that was selling it for uh, for 50 bucks there um, uh, on eBay um, and I want to point out that whatever you may have heard as far as uh, oh you, you can't get good deals on eBay anymore people are just people are not you know what people are people which means that people are inconsistent which means that there's a lot of people that don't know what the hell they're selling people assume a lot of things and they don't necessarily know what the hell they're doing I have gotten Vitas for as cheap as 30 bucks before because somebody went and turned it off, right? So they went and they turned it off. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, do you want to restart now? No. They'll get an error message on the thing. Or, for example, we go over here, we go to uh, to the power button, we tell it to turn off, right? So, you know, Joe Schmo over at the pawn shop goes and takes a look at this thing. <gasps> I pressed the power button! <gasps> I pressed the power button! Oh my god! It's dead! We've been scammed! So, yeah. You gotta hold it for a couple seconds, and then the thing turns on. Because it's a slightly longer hold than most modern devices. Which means that a lot of pawn shops will sell these things as broken for parts on eBay, and not know what the hell they're doing. Uh, same thing with the, with the Switch. The reason that I got it for 50 bucks is somebody sold it broken for parts. This thing is practically mint. You know why they thought it was broken for parts? Because some kid went and sold it to a pawn shop, saying that it had a broken screen. It had a cracked screen protector. That took me like three seconds to diagnose after it came out of the box. It, to, don't assume that because somebody has a pawn shop that there's some kind of brilliant uh, sales genius that understands all the stuff that they're selling. Most of the time, it's just random crap that passes through their desk. They have no idea what the hell it is. And frankly, Google isn't necessarily going to help them out on it. Um, actually, in this particular regard, I've gotten PSPs for as little as 10 bucks in a, a similar way before. Um, those are very oftentimes sold uh, without a battery. Uh, batteries, uh, if you get a camera and see no battery, that's about 20 bucks. So there you go, you can get those for super cheap as well. Um, I've gotten them completely brand new for 25 bucks uh, before, because again, they're old and people assume that they have no value. Um, in fact, between all of these, the one that's consistently the uh, most difficult uh, to actually get a decent uh, a decent one for the price is going to be the 3DS, because uh, it's got, you know, a hell of a lot of proprietary stuff. Um, hardest to fix, probably hardest to replace, it's the reason that I never even bothered trying to replace mine, because uh, it was hard enough to, uh, to fix it in the first place, and then as soon as it, it got destroyed, I was like, yeah, I think I just don't have a 3DS anymore. <laughs> That's the end of that. Um, meanwhile, when it comes to the Switch Lite, 
Uh, this is also one of those ones that's actually very easy to, to get a hold of. Um, just due to a similar kind of quirk to its uh, whole situation there, uh, where a lot of times people bought these, like they would buy one for themselves, and then their kids would watch them, and they're like, hey, can I play the Switch? And then eventually, they end up seeing, oh, hey, I can get an OLED and give this to my kid. And then they get it for their kid, and then their kid wants to play it on the TV. They can't play it on the TV, so you get something that's been played like a week, and then uh, they end up uh, they end up on eBay. These things wind up on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, whatever else, for less than a hundred bucks all the time. Typical going rate for these is about a hundred bucks, but uh, you can get them for way the hell cheaper. Um, just literally, just keep lowballing people, and eventually you'll get it. Uh, I'll, most of the devices that I get, um, I just look uh, for parts or broken, and then just look for uh, uh, or best offer uh, type listings. Regularly can find these for nothing. Um, same thing with the Vita. Again, they're devices that are oftentimes completely not understood by the people that are selling them, so uh, you can oftentimes get them for very, very cheap. Um, I should point out also, this is if you're noticing finger screen differences and whatever else, um, if you have this, like I have it right here, without a screen, typically you won't see these uh, fingerprints on there very often. Um, like most of the time, uh, it's pretty darn clear. If you have a screen protector, they'll show up a lot more. That's another one of those little kind of misconceptions about it. I just didn't wipe this off, so it's kind of showing up on there right now. Um, but uh, oddly enough, this is one of the few devices that I would actually recommend not having a screen protector on for, uh, just because it makes everything work a little better, and typically everything is protected by these anyway. I hear some folks uh, saying that they scratch the screens with their keys. Why would you stick a device in the same pocket as your keys? What kind of sane, rational human being does this? <laughs> so there's that. Um, literally the only gripe that I have, like his actual pocket ability wise, I was a little bit surprised that this one actually has held up as well as, uh, as it has. Um, that's, uh, it's actually not too dissimilar from the, uh, the Vita. It's not quite, it's not quite as evasively designed, I guess you could describe it, because this is like rounded on all sides. It's perfectly smoothed off. Um, pretty much whatever way you flip it, it's going into your pocket this, uh, just fine. This wants to go in sideways first, so it's a little bit more awkward. Um, and also these come in more vibrant colors, which means that they typically stick out a bit more. Whereas I've been like, I've had a Vita in public for the longest time, and usually folks assume it's a phone uh, without looking closer. Um, so, it, it's been one of those weird little nice happy uh, things there, because frankly, nobody bothers you when you're looking, when you're on a phone, but oftentimes if you have something a bit more recognizable like a Switch, you'll be like, oh, what's your playing? I, you have not heard of Tactic Soaker, go away! <laughs> I don't actually say that, but like, realistically, no, nobody plays these games, <laughs> so, oh man, anyway. Anyway, so that's uh, that's kind of my two cents on this whole thing. So if you were considering, you know, going up from a Vita to a Switch, and you were wondering if the pocketability factor was workable, I'd say it for for the most part it is. Um, I wish that these had plastic edges on them like the Vita does. I wish that this was moddable to some safe degree, only because I'd love to be able to uh, do a video out on this thing, but instead I have to rely on this freaking recording button. Um, uh, the, uh, again, library is really good on these things, um, so that's always nice. Um, and generally speaking, it's nice to just have this device that, uh, that I can play with the kiddos. As much as I'm not a huge fan of locking away their emulators behind, um, uh, you know, behind a paywall and stuff like that, uh, in general, I'm actually pretty happy with, uh, uh with the way that their, uh, their services work. Like, it's nice to see online services for old games and such. Uh, the other day, uh, you know, my, uh, my daughter was going and trying the Pokemon, uh, trading card game online. Um, I don't know exactly how it went, to be honest. I just got the little trigger on my phone for the, uh, parental controls, which actually, that's for the, that's the other thing I want to mention. Uh, the parental controls on these things, uh, for the kiddos are kind of funny, because you can, uh, you can basically lock away a lot of the features of the device, put timers on there, all of that kind of thing. I find it really, really funny, uh, the kinds of stuff that it freaks out about, because it decided that, uh, that the violence in Spyro the Dragon was too much, uh, for the kiddos, so I had to go up their ratings and things like that. <laughs> um, and also, uh, Pokemon was apparently too violent for it, so, uh, I guess at some point Evangelicals got involved. <laughs> anyway, so, that's my bizarro ramble for the day yes, recorded off a friggin' phone camera, don't judge me. Um, and yeah, I don't know who this is useful for, but if it's useful for you, there you go. Y'all have yourselves a good one, and take care.